Let's just focus now. Sri Lanka is set to hold presidential elections on 21st of September. This will be the first presidential poll after the ouster of Gotabaya Rajapaksa in 2022. A total of 39 candidates, that's a record in Sri Lanka, are in the fray for the top job. Three top runners in this cluttered contest of Sri Lanka's presidency are National People's Power Coalition or NPP candidate Anura Kumar Adisanayaka, sitting president Ranil Vikrame Singha, he and the leader of the opposition Sajit Premadasa. Namal Rajapaksa, the son of Mahinda Rajapaksa, is also in the contest. The NPP has emerged as a strong force in this contest using populist agendas like tax cuts and reverting the country to British style Westminster model of governance. Sri Lanka is still recovering after the economic meltdown in 2022, which resulted in the ouster of Rajapaksa. President Ranil Vikramisinghe is banking on a $2.9 million IMF bailout loan to stabilize the economy. On the other side, this Nayaka has vowed to renegotiate that deal with the IMF. We believe there could have been another alternative. But now all the bilateral and multilateral agreements have been placed inside the IMF basket. We can't come out from that. But we will have a discussion with them. Primarily, our stance is that more attention should be paid to the hardships faced by the people when moving forward with the IMF program. Disanayaka leads the People's Liberation Front, which led to armed insurgencies in 1971 and 1987 before taking the political route. His presidential bid in 2019 general elections ended with third place and only 3% of the vote. But this time around, more than 10% of new voters will hold the key to power for candidates. Meanwhile, a old question of Tamil autonomy has also resurfaced. Tamil Nationalist Party has launched a campaign to boycott the elections. TNP, along with TNFP, has demanded a federal setup for the political autonomy of Tamils. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.